What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barf. Like today we've got a special episode for you. You guys have asked for it time and again and Marius and I have finally delivered 10 easy cocktails to make at home. But before you do that, it's very important that you do one thing for me. Okay, I'm doing something for you, you do something for me. And you know what that is? Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and then let's get into making the cocktails. First cocktail up is a Whiskey Smash. The Whiskey Smash has been around since the early 1800s, but made its first appearance in print in Jerry Thomas's Bon Vivant's Guide in 1862, and then a subsequent appearance in 1888 in Harry Johnson's Bartender's Guide. Uh, but it didn't actually gain popularity until it was on the menu at the Rainbow Room uh, when Dale DeGroff put it on there in 1998. Uh, it is a very simple drink. Um, it is basically a uh, mint julep with the addition of a little bit of fruit. Uh, so let's get into it. It's very, very easy. First thing we're going to do is a small palm of mint. You can do eight to 10 leaves. Uh, then it's really important to actually add your lime, lemon wedges on top of the mint. The reason why is because we're going to muddle it and we don't want to get it. Uh, we don't want the mint to get vegetal. So uh, we want to make sure that we don't eviscerate the mint with the muddler when we do it. So I like to try and kind of place them in there with the peel side down. The other benefit of doing this is that um, when, you pay, when you place it with the peel side down and you muddle it, you're gonna be extracting a lot of the oils from the peels and it's gonna give it a nice, very, very intense lemon flavor. Uh, then we're just gonna add three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup and two ounces of bourbon. I'm gonna take our muddler and give those, uh, that lemon and the, that mint a nice press. And we're just gonna add a very small dash of pebble ice just to chill it and get the dilution going and give it a nice whip shake. You can whip shake it until all of the ice is gone or you don't have to, it's fine. And then we're just gonna dump it all into a glass, cover it in pebble ice, and then add a nice bouquet of mint. And we're gonna give it a nice, uh, can you say it with me? The old crushy pants, the old slappy boo. And stick it in there with a straw. Let's give it a taste. You want that straw to be right next to your mint because you wanna make sure that you are smelling the mint as you drink the cocktail. It's fantastic. Woo, the old granddad is 100 proof bonded whiskey. So we've got the nice heat from the whiskey. You got just enough simple syrup to really just like balance out that lemon, but the lemon is still very tart. Uh, you got that nice mint aroma and flavor as you drink it. A wonderful, wonderful drink. You guys are gonna like this a lot. There it is, the Whiskey Smash. Next cocktail up is the 1934 Cosmo. Now this gin-based Cosmo was first published in Pioneers of Mixing at Elite Bars in 1933 and predates its vodka-based cousin by uh, 50 years or more. It is a great drink and we are gonna get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is three quarters of an ounce of fresh raspberry syrup, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, followed by two ounces of gin. Using Plymouth today, you can use London Dry if you like. Plymouth is my favorite for this particular drink. We're gonna add our ice to our tin. Add our cocktail and give it a nice hard shake. All right, now, this wouldn't be a barfly video had I not forgotten something and uh, I'm sure just by looking at the lack of tools here, you will see what I forgot. Luckily, it is very, very close by. All right, and we're gonna give it a nice double strain into our glass. And then give it a nice orange twist. I'll put it here, we'll give it a little taste. Oh, that is so good. Now, the key here is fresh raspberry syrup. That fresh raspberry and lemon mixed with the botanicals of the gin is just so wonderful. It is nice and tart, uh, and it has that nice orange kind of flavor right on top of it. It is very easy to drink. Doesn't seem like it has a ton of booze, but it has a ton of booze, so be careful. The 1934 Cosmo. For our next cocktail, we're gonna be doing the Vucure. The Vucure was created by bartender Walter Bergeron in 1938 at the Carousel Bar inside the Montelion Hotel in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, the other thing to kind of note is that Vucure actually stands for Old Square. 
uh, which is a reference to the French Quarter. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is just uh, a few dashes of Angostura bitters, and then we're gonna do a couple dashes of Peychaud's bitters. We're building this in the glass because we're building it on the rock. If you would like to build it in a mixed glass and pour it on a rock, you can do that as well. Uh, quarter of an ounce of Benedictine. And we'll do one ounce of cognac. You should use the VSOP. One ounce of rye whiskey. And finally, one ounce of sweet vermouth. We're gonna take our pre-cut rock of ice, kind of gently lower it in there. You don't want it to spill too much and then give it a nice little stir. And with a nice rock like this, you're not gonna have to worry too much about over stirring. Just you, this drink is sitting on a rock and it's going to dilute and chill as you go. So you can chill it and you can stir it to chill it and dilute it as much as you like. And then what we're gonna do is just a nice orange twist. Spritz those oils on top, give it a nice little wrap. I said give it a nice little wrap, but what I actually meant to say is give it a nice little, little wipe on the side of the glass. Let's take a sip. There is not many things that are better than that. The Benedictine sweetens it just enough. You got that nice sort of bitter finish from the Angostura and the Peychaud's bitters. It's funny because like the cognac and the rye and the sweet vermouth are such a good are such good flavor buddies. You can kind of taste them all at the same time. You could sort of taste them all together and separately at the same time, if that makes sense. And then you got the nice sort of spicy sweetness of the Benedictine sort of bringing up just this little tad bit of sweet, right? Which finishes with a nice bitter touch from the last from the two bitters that you have in there. So do yourselves a favor and mix yourself up a bucare. For our very next cocktail, we're gonna be making a Death in the Afternoon, purportedly created by Ernest Hemingway and named after his uh, book of the same name, published in 1938. This is gonna be the simplest cocktail we've ever done on Barfly. I think really seriously ever done. And we're using Corbel sparkling wine instead of champagne because we fancy. They actually call themselves California Champagne. Now I will say, use whatever champagne or sparkling wine or Prosecco you want. Just remember that sparkling wine and Prosecco is gonna be a little bit sweeter than something like champagne is gonna be a lot drier. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna do a single ounce of absinthe into our glass. And then we're just gonna to top it up with champagne. And as you can see, when you put in the champagne, you get that like louche. So it's like kind of that yellowy, um, greenish sort of like, I don't know, I guess like the, the green fairy kind of style color. The louche is uh, a, a word to describe the color of the absinthe as it changes color when you add like a liquid to it. Usually if it's regular absinthe service, you'd be doing water but in this case we're doing champagne and it still kind of changes to that like pale yellowy green color. It's like ethereal, ethereal color, right? Let's, let's sip it. You're all gonna know that right off the bat you are gonna get that absinthe flavor. You're gonna get the flavor of the wormwood and anise. But what's nice is that it's supported by the lightly sweet and dry kind of sparkling uh, champagne. So there you have it, my very good friends. The death in the afternoon. Next cocktail up is the mojito, which is the national drink of Cuba. Uh, the mojito can be traced back to the 1580s to a, a pirate named Robert Drake, who actually created a cocktail called El Drake, which means the Drake. Be, I mean, that's very narcissistic, but it, 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 it does mean the Drake in Spanish. Um, and it was a very similar drink, but it was made with a uh, cane spirit called Aguardente de Caña, which is a little bit closer to like, uh, I don't know, like rum as moonshine maybe. Um, it is actually still around and there are some producers that still make this spirit. Anyway, he made this drink to combat scurvy on his ship. Uh, and then the modern mojito as we know it now uh, emerged sometime around 1862 and the uh, Bacardi company has laid claim to the creation of the drink. But I don't know that to be true, although I don't know it to be false either. All right, let's get into the drink. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, eight to 10 mint leaves in the bottom of your uh, mixing tin. Uh, then we're gonna add uh, half an ounce of simple syrup. We're gonna add one sugar cube. And then we're gonna add four wedges of lime into the bottom of the tin. We wanna make sure that the peel side is down as much as possible. 
Uh, the reason for that being is you want to muddle the flesh of the mint, but you want to release the oils and the peel. And then you also don't want to make the um, uh, mint too vegetal in the drink. Uh, then we're just gonna add two ounces of rum. We're using Cuban rum. You can use any white rum you like, but today we got some Cuban rum, so we're using some Cuban rum for the Cuban drink. Uh, then we'll give it a nice muddle. Firm, but gentle, if that makes sense. Then we're just gonna add a little, little bit of pebble ice into the bottom of our tin and give it a nice whip shake. And then we're just simply going to dump it into the bottom of our glass. And then we're going to add pebble ice. And I have this little technique that I do where I take the pebble ice and I kind of push it down uh, into there. And the reason why is because I a lot of recipes call for uh, the addition of soda water on top of a mojito, but I do not like to add soda water in it because I think it lengthens, lengthens the flavors too much and it really just does not need that soda on top. Not to mention the fact that when you do a drink like this and you have pebble ice and you put soda water on the top, it's just going to sit on the top and not actually mix into it. You would actually have to put everything in there, then put the soda in there and then put the, um, uh, and then put the, the pebble ice, but you're not gonna fit enough soda in here to really give it much effervescence. And I just don't think that the, the drink needs it. I'm pretty sure, although if I'm wrong, you guys feel free to correct me. I'm pretty sure that the original drink did not actually contain soda water. So then what we're gonna do is a nice big bushy bouquet of mint. Give it a nice crushy poo, slappy pants, uh, break off the excess, and then just like stick it right in there. Uh, and there it is, let's take a sip. So what's great about this is that you get such a intense lime flavor with this. And the other thing that I'm gonna talk about here that some of you might be questioning is that you had seen that I put a cube of sugar and I put half an ounce of simple syrup in there. And the reason why I did that is because that half an ounce of simple syrup is gonna immediately balance out the lime juice that we squeezed out of each uh, quarter, but that, so, but that sugar cube is actually basically sugar that has not fully uh, diluted into the drink that's actually on a time release. So as you drink it, it's gonna get a little sweeter and a little bit sweeter. Uh, so there it is, guys, go and get it, the mojito. This cocktail is called the Jungle Bird. It was first created in 1978 at the Kuala Lumpur Hilton Hotel. And it's one of my favorite tiki drinks because it is both tropical, but also employs the bitterness of Campari, which I think kind of puts it in a class of its own. It's got a major, major following. It's a simple drink and you guys are gonna love it. So let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do is take the cap off the lime, half an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, ounce and a half of pineapple, three quarters of an ounce of Campari and an ounce and a half of dark rum. Today I'm using Karuba. Add our cocktail ice. Add our cocktail to the ice. Give it a shake. So we're gonna add our big rock of ice into our glass and then just give it a nice double strain over the rock. And then we're just going to add a little orchid to it. All right, let's give it a try. That is just like, mm. you have a perfect balance between the lime, which is adding some tartness and the simple syrup, right? Which is making it so that it's not too, too tart. And you've got that nice kind of semi-sweetness of the pineapple juice supporting that dark rum. And then you just have that bitter finish from the Campari. It's so good. This is a great starter drink for people who don't really like to drink Campari. A lot of people think that Campari is too bitter, but when it is paired with the right ingredients, it is absolutely phenomenal. And this cocktail is no exception. So there it is. The Jungle Bird. The next cocktail has been a very requested cocktail here on Barfly. There are a lot of people who are having trouble finding like a solid recipe for it. So I decided that I would do it today and it is a very simple drink so it fits with our video. It's called a Pink Lady and it's a Prohibition era drink uh, that utilizes grenadine, which was a very, very popular uh, mixer at the time of Prohibition, probably as a device to uh, mask the flavor of uh, bathtub gin. Uh, all right, let's get in the drink. That's all the history we got on it. So three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of grenadine, one ounce Applejack, one ounce gin. Grab our big tin, 
separate our egg white. And we're going to add our cocktail together and give it a nice hard dry shake. We're gonna add our big rock of ice into there. Give it another shake. Double strain it into our glass. All right, let's taste it. So you get the botanicals of the gin, but what's really nice is the combination of grenadine and applejack, which gives it that sort of like apple flavor. But the grenadine is giving it the, that, that nice savory sweetness that it has. And then coupling with the tartness of the lemon is just like, it's amazingly good. And then of course it's an egg white drink, so it's nice and creamy. It's nice because it feels a little proofy. You know, we're using the uh, Laird's Bonded Apple Jack, so it's 100 proof. And it feels a little proofy, but it's not overly burn, burny on the back of your throat. It's just really nice. Uh, this is a really nice cocktail to drink. I don't know what more to say about it other than that it's awesome. So there it is, my friends, the Pink Lady. Next cocktail up is called a Humble Brag. It's my very own martini variation, and I think it's a pretty fitting name. So a humble, humble Brag, the word Humble Brag was coined by the late great comedian uh, Harris Whittles. Basically what a Humble Brag is, is a statement that, is self that seems self-depreciating, but whose like veiled or actual intention is to bring attention to something that you're proud of. Um, and I think that this is a great, uh, I think this is a great name for this particular cocktail. All right, it's gonna be a real simple one, guys. Just like everything in this video, this one is gonna be one of the most simple. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to add uh, like three to four dashes of uh, grapefruit bitters. We're using Fee's grapefruit bitters today. One ounce of dry vermouth. Two ounces of Mulholland distilling gin. Now I will say that the gin I'm using in this uh, cocktail is very proprietary and important. And the reason why is because Mulholland has a lot of cucumber in its flavor profile. And the, what separates this from like your traditional martini, like two to one martini, which is one of my favorite drinks, is that we're pairing the grapefruit and the cucumber flavor with some of the other botanicals in the gin, but it's really all about that cucumber grapefruit pairing, which makes it really nice. Um, never fear if you don't live in a place where Mulholland is carried, you can absolutely sub out uh, Hendrix, which is gonna be a gin that also has a ton of, uh, of uh, cucumber in its flavor profile. All right, so what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna add our ice, pre-cut my, my ice into a mixing glass, and then we're gonna give it a nice stir. And we're gonna strain it into our glass and give it a nice grapefruit twist. If I can get a peel off this grapefruit. Yeah, there we go. Right on the top. God, it's wonderful. Okay, now I know a lot of people are gonna say that about their own drink, but really what I love about this drink is that it has that fresh grapefruit on top and then you've got nice, uh, cucumber and that bitter grapefruit from the grapefruit bitters kind of going through the cocktail, pairing with the other botanicals in the gin. It just makes a really nice, bright martini variation. Very kind of refreshing and then just sort of punchy on the citrus end so that you're not just getting like a whole bunch of juniper. You're getting those a little bit of those savory flavors, but you're really, really, really punching up the citrus on this one. So there it is, folks, the humble brag. Next cocktail up is called a Rio Grande Sour. It was created by bartender Rangini Bose at Seamstress in New York City. And it is a great sour which utilizes cachaça and Jägermeister, which I love. So first thing we're gonna do is add a orange wedge into our tin. Then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, half an ounce of Jägermeister, and one and a half ounces of the Avua Amburana Cachaça. This is an egg white sour, so we are going to crack our egg into the other tin and separate the white. We're going to muddle this a little bit, making sure not to muddle it too much because you don't want to impart too much bitterness into the uh, drink from the peel. And then we're just gonna add this together and give it a nice emulsifying shake. And that means we're gonna shake it dry with no ice. We're gonna add our big rock of ice. 
We add a big rock of ice because we're gonna get that superior texture to it. And uh, I'm actually gonna wipe this tin off. All right, let's give it a nice hard shake. All right. I like to double strain uh, egg white cocktails because first of all, in this particular cocktail, we have an orange wedge, which is gonna get, which could get little bits inside the cocktail, which I don't like. I like to have a nice clean cocktail, but also if the um, ice broke up a little bit, it's gonna add ice shards, which is gonna kill your foam. So I like to double strain it out into a nice footed rocks glass. And we're gonna finish this cocktail off with some fresh orange zest. And then we're gonna discard the peel. Let's give it a taste. Oh man. The pairing of orange cachaca and Jägermeister is like, mm, cause you get the cachaca and the orange bringing up most of the front palate flavor, but then you've got that nice herbal bitterness right on the end. Smoothness from the egg white is just like, mm. It's creamy. It's sort of banana-y and orangey. It's almost like that, it almost tastes like that orange banana flavor, but like the orange flavor is greatly amplified because we muddled a bit of the peel in there, which released all the essential oils into this drink. It is beautiful to look at. It's a very nice sour and it is wonderful to drink. And on top of it all, it's incredibly easy to make. There it is, the Rio Grande Sour. So for a very last cocktail, I wanted to do something that is very similar to the first cocktail that we did, but with a different, with one different variable. Uh, and basically what I wanted to, to show is how um, different something can be when it has almost all of the same ingredients except for one. So right now what we're gonna be doing is called a strawberry fix. So fixes were a very old style of cocktail. According to David Wondrich, they are one of, if not the oldest cocktail on record. And um, it is literally just a sour made with a base spirit. In this case, we'll be using bourbon. Um, and then uh, usually with a little bit of fruit added to it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take, I took three strawberries and I quartered them and we're just gonna add them to the bottom of our glass. And I'm just gonna give them a nice muddle. And you gotta be kind of careful when you muddle these in glass because you can easily break your glass and cut yourself. And I don't want you to do that. I'm gonna situate that all at the bottom of the glass and we're gonna add our ice. Right on top of it. Then set that aside. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of bourbon. So we're gonna add a little Scotia ice here and we're gonna give it a nice whip shake. Just gonna dump it in. More crushed ice on, or pebble ice for that matter on top. And then we're gonna add a little strawberry garnish. But let's taste it. I really wanna get down there in where the strawberries are at. You can taste that bourbon sour. It's basically a bourbon sour, but you have that nice kind of tart, semi-sweet strawberry flavor to it. And it is a beautiful drink to look at as well. Now, if you want to, you can puree the strawberries to get it to be smaller if you'd like, or you can um, crush them up a little bit more with your muddler. Uh, it's not necessary at all. Uh, it's nice to have one of these big thick straws so you can get some of the strawberry bits. You're gonna catch very few with a straw like this, but um, I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put it in there anyway, just because it's the right size. And there it is, the strawberry fix. There you have it, 10 easy cocktails to make at home, volume two. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash theeducatedbarfly. Uh, we have a discount code on Staggerly Goods. So go to staggerlygoods.com and, and go and type in barfly SLG20 at checkout for 20% off on your awesome aprons, the aprons that make me so look so awesome and so uh, dapper in these videos. You can have one too. Uh, and that's, I think that's it. So I guess I'll see you guys on another time.